quantum computing is predicted to revolutionise everything from medicine, energy networks to defence. Quantum physics is the laws of physics that describe things right at the very smallest scale of individual atoms and particles of light, electrons. Industry pioneer Stephen Bartlett is setting up a national quantum centre at Sydney University with federal funding. We think that quantum technologies are really going to be disruptive across a whole range of things. Those rules of quantum physics allow us to do things that are just not possible with our conventional technologies. So new ways of doing computing, not just faster, but different. The Albanese government wants Australia to be a global leader in the quantum race. This technology will define the generations of our kids and grandkids, just like the smartphone or the iPhone did compared with the landline. Quantum computing is still an unproven technology, so some in the scientific world were surprised when last month the federal and Queensland governments announced a joint almost $1 billion investment in a US-based company, PsyQuantum. There was very little transparency as into this deal as to why they made this particular very large bet on this particular California company. Silicon Valley headquartered company PsyQuantum was founded by two expat Australians. It's promising to build the world's first useful quantum computer by 2029 using photons, which are single particles of light, something it previously said it would do by 2025. I believe the term impossible will soon be banished from our field. As part of the deal, the company must build a regional headquarters in Brisbane and hire 400 staff. This is our moonshot. For Queensland, this is our project Apollo. Not everyone's convinced the big bet on PsyQuantum will result in our own moon landing. The government has decided to put all their eggs in this one particular basket. There are multiple approaches to trying to solve quantum computing. This is one of them. It's not clear that it's going to be the successful one. Um, and there are actually lots of homegrown Australian talent looking at other approaches that I would have thought might also be worthy of investment. <laughs> Artificial intelligence scientist Toby Walsh says his industry is already kicking goals and needs more funding. I'm not suggesting that we should invest less in quantum. I am suggesting, however, that we should invest more in AI. All the reports that I've ever seen have suggested that AI offers potentially an even greater uh, financial economic return to Australia than quantum ever will do. And that return is going to happen much sooner. Chief Scientist Cathy Foley sat on the technical advisory panel for the PsyQuantum deal. The evidence is there that the next stages of bringing it all together for having one of the first fault-tolerant quantum computers that is usable here in Australia is definitely a possibility. Of course there's going to be twists and turns, it's high risk and it's also challenging, but it's something where we're giving it a go. While the UK has also taken a punt on PsyQuantum, its investment to set up a research and development lab is one fiftieth the size of Australia's. If I was in the decision making, I would have been inclined to make 10, $100 million investments or 100, $10 million investments than one $1 billion investment. The PsyQuantum cash splash is also raising concerns in Canberra. Key details of the investment, including when taxpayers should expect a return, haven't been released. We don't know what sort of combination of equity versus loans this investment is that's been announced, and I think that's, that's really important. The thing I would urge the government to do is when they are going to pick winners, they have to lock in the upside. You're taking a risk on a company, I'd say if it's a transparent process, we get to a point where we say, yes, this company is the best place to deliver, let's invest, but let's lock in that upside. There are also concerns that while the federal government did seek advice from the chief scientist, it did not consult its own quantum advisory committee about the investment and claims it ran a narrow and secretive EOI process that favoured PsyQuantum. We're advised by the public sector 
about offering an expression of interest, we approached 20 domestic and international firms uh, to see who would be best placed uh, to build uh, one of the world's first fault tolerant quantum computers and also have uh, spillover effects for local industry. Federal Science Minister Ed Husick met with SciQuantum in late 2022 and again in Silicon Valley in early 2023. SciQuantum also hired a labour-aligned lobbying firm. I have met with a range of different quantum technology companies in this country. I've talked all of them up in one way, shape or form because I recognise the value of quantum technology to our economy and industry. From my perspective, it's pretty exciting that our physics research that's been funded for many decades has now got to a level of maturity and the government is supporting that whole industry to be able to deliver something which will have benefit not just to Australia, but also globally. Stephen Bartlett says large government investments in local quantum companies will be crucial for a breakthrough. We need to see some investment going across all of those to, to make sure that we're going to be able to lead no matter what is the ultimate winning technology here.